Good evening, everybody. You're watching the live Monica Makes It Happen Facebook show, over 200 shows, and we are always focused on your housing, on solving problems, practical solutions. And tonight we are talking about, well, NYCHA yet again, this time the demolition of buildings, possibly the future of what will happen to NYCHA, not just in Chelsea, but all across the city. And so many of you have so much to say, but first, take a look. Monica Makes It Happen is sponsored by London Disability, dedicated to helping the disabled get Social Security benefits. So many of you want to talk about this, so that's why we do these Facebook shows, because we only get two and a half minutes on television, but we get so much more time. So if you have a comment right now, join us live, comment as you see fit, send us some emojis, whatever you're thinking, send us your videos too. I am joined by Jacqueline Laura. You probably know and love her. She's been on her show before. And Norman Siegel, famed attorney, should say very well-known attorney that's been fighting for people uh, for all sorts of justice. But tonight he's talking about, is this the right thing to do? Demolition of buildings starting over. NYCHA saying it is. Uh, it's the easiest way to do it. So much needs to be fixed in these buildings. And so many of you complain to us every single day. But so many of you have so many questions. We went out there to talk to families and residents who were actually there at Fulton and Chelsea. It's a one $1.5 billion plan uh, with private developers to demolish and redevelop the Fulton houses and the Elliott Chelsea houses, both in that Chelsea neighborhood. We know that is some of the highest real estate values. Uh, we've covered this story for years, your protests, your questions. And then here we go, unprecedented, yet back again, the talk of demolition, and they say it's happening. It would take six years to do, and if approved by the New York City Council. Um, so joining us, we always like to have an attorney on standby here, and who's the best attorney? Norman Siegel. He's joining us, representing several of the Fulton House's tenants, and Jacqueline Laura, who lives in the Fulton Houses. Now, first, let's talk to you. Jacqueline, you have been very vocal against the demolition. Now they're saying it's happening. What do you think? Um, I am really baffled about this. Um, I thought that by by us protesting um, opposed for the demolition, we had won that during the working group. And in the conclusion of the working group, it was said no demolition. Then. Uh, I don't know, probably, probably like a year later, I hear now they want to demolish all the buildings. And um, I think that's unfair. I mean, I don't think we had enough notice on um, papers to read and understand what exactly is going on. They're just pushing this so fast. That See, the developer, I, I spoke to the developer for my story, I think it was last week. Mm -hmm. And the reason we're doing the show now is because so many people have so many questions and they said they've gone through so many, so many public hearings, they've gone through so much. So what we're hearing though, from the residents who went to that public hearing that we, we covered last week was that they don't have the information. So two different stories, two different complete, you know, complete stories. And that's where we have Norman Siegel, who's the lawyer representing some of the Fulton house tenants. Uh, tell me, I mean, Norman, you have some serious concerns. They say that, most of the residents voted yes and said they want demolition, they want to rebuild, but you say what? Well, there was never a vote. There was never a referendum. There was no statement that what they asked them to fill out was a survey, that that would be binding. A survey is just asking someone, what's their thinking? What do they prefer? Uh, you can't then say a majority of the people in the two housing projects uh, voted to do demolition. Give you an example. The New York Times said 30% of the eligible people were able to vote. So I then figured out that you're talking about eligibility, 3,167 eligible voters. The Times said about 950 people voted. So of the 950, they said 30% of those people voted, and then 60% of the 30% voted for demolition. So when you do that, 18% of the people who were eligible to vote actually voted, and only 11% of the people who actually voted were in favor of demolition. That's not the way to do this. So what we call upon NYCHA and the elected officials to stop putting out the word 
that a majority of the people voted for demolition. Let's set up a process, give the people in the two uh, projects, uh, developments, uh, 30 days to look at this stuff, have some forums, and then let them vote in a fair, open process. And then let's see what the results are as to what they prefer. And again, speaking to the developer and to NYCHA uh, last week, and then NYCHA sent us a new statement telling us that they are working very hard and engaging residents, saying that NYCHA and our partners will continue to engage res residents throughout the process of rebuilding Fulton at Elliott Chelsea to ensure that they are properly included in decision-making and planning for their new homes. Now, obviously, depends on who you ask. The tenant president, Jacqueline, has been very adamant that the, the, the residents are for demolition. I don't know what residents are those. Um, as far as me talking to a few residents, um, everybody's, they, they don't want demolition and people are very afraid of what's going on. They do talk to the residents, but then they're, they're not listening to us. We're telling them we don't want no demolition. We don't want that. And we don't want rad either. We don't want none of that. Monica, I, I don't understand how from 366 million to fix both developments, Chelsea and Fulton, um, turned into 1.5 billion. I mean, listen, you could fix a few developments with that kind of money. Not even, you know, I don't understand the math there. I really don't. I really don't. Something is in between. Norman, when you see the plan, I mean, and, you're, and you are a lawyer and you're representing these residents now, I guess your game plan now is you're, you want them to do another vote. Right. When you say they say that the uh, residents voted and Jackie says, what resident? So the way my math looks at it, 342 people voted for demolition out of a possible 3,167. So there's a small segment of the people in the two developments who say yes to demolition. But the overwhelming, almost 90% of the people did not vote, did not express their preference. So they got to do a democratic fair process to determine what the people want. If that's what they say they're doing, they want to know what the residents want. So do it in a fair way. And second, it raises very serious questions about demolishing the buildings so that you build certain buildings in the future for NYCHA residents, and then you're going to build other buildings on the city property for non-NYCHA residents. That could be a change in what public housing is all about. Our position is public housing should remain public. If you're now going to take the property that the city owns and give it to non-NYCHA people, then that's not what public housing it has been for 80 years. So this raises very serious questions. And if they take Fulton and Elliott Chelsea and develop this kind of model, are they gonna do it for the rest of the city? Are they gonna do it the rest for the state, the rest of the country? That's what could be at stake here. I'm glad you're asking that because Henry Rossoff, my colleague, actually delves deep with the real estate, the guy who's in charge of real estate for night to take a look. Can you knock anything down? You're ripping apart community. Lisa Jasinowski was among a group of young mothers we met out and about with their little ones at the Elliott Chelsea houses. They told us their futures felt uncertain with the decision to demolish their homes and rebuild everything from the ground up. I think there could have been another way to salvage what is beautiful here, um, in addition to bettering the living situation and conditions for the residents. Others expressed skepticism. They would not be placed back in their home communities and that overall the developer would not keep promises. The plan itself is to demolish the more than 2,000 combined units of both the Fulton and Elliott Chelsea houses and rebuild everything taller. That would create an additional 1,500 units of both market rate and affordable housing, along with commercial and retail space. Tenants are being promised upgraded recreational and community spaces, along with better in-home amenities like dishwashers, individual heating and cooling, and laundry. We have a safe environment and a healthy environment to live in. Elliott Chelsea Tenant Association President Darlene Waters says after years of engagement, residents voted in favor of this plan. 
At Elliott Chelsea, the first new tower will replace the Hudson Guild Community Center and some senior housing, creating capacity to shift residents around during the process. Waters acknowledges the concerns of some of her fellow tenants. Especially the seniors, uh, you know, it's hard when you have to move, but we don't want to be in this situation anymore. Design details are still being finalized, but Jamar Adams with Essence Development says he plans to continue to engage with the community and keep promises that are being made, including immediate fixes ahead of the rebuild. We'll address some maintenance concerns, you know, heating issues, um, hot water issues, elevators, um, mold and leak. And NYCHA's Jonathan Gavaya says this is likely not the last wholesale public housing rebuild we'll see with a $40 billion maintenance backlog. We have been hearing from more and more residents that are interested in doing bigger things in terms of new construction or rebuilding. So I do think we'll see more of it. The plan will have to go through an exhaustive land use process that often gets political. So this not quite a done deal yet. In Chelsea, Henry Rossoff, PIX11 News. Thank you, Henry. Very thorough. And um, Mika is joining us. Mika says, how long is that construction project supposed to take? Allegedly, I think the answer is six years. And then Irene Hernandez says, where are these tenants going to live while renovation and rebuilding is happening? And I think that's such an interesting question. When I really pressed the developer on that question, they said that there would be temporary housing in the actual development itself, but is that possible is the question, right, Norman? Absolutely, and I think that we need more information. More information is needed, and very often when developers or the government doesn't give you the information and it's not transparent, uh, my sense is they're trying to control the process, and I know the people of Fulton. They're terrific. People like Jackie, and others, uh, they're smart, they're usually underestimated. Uh, I'm telling NYCHA right now, don't underestimate the people at Fulton. And Asia says, I'd like to, they're putting these buildings up so fast, causing so many issues to pop up after the fact. I'm wondering, you know, if that's, if that's the case, Jacqueline, you know, some have said that this process has been going on for years. We've been covering this. So it's not exactly fast, but you're saying it's not transparent. Exactly. It's not. I mean, it, it's been going on. All right. You know, we've been protesting since 2019, and I'm sure that they've wanted this property right before that. But, yeah, you know, it didn't mean anything to them. But now, you know, now they're really pushing for it. But no no final decision was ever made, and no residents were ever told about it. You know, these are things that they were like, I think we should. Or, you know, everything was up in the air. Now they're just trying to push it all to us at one time. And I don't think that's fair. No, and Melissa Melissa uh, agrees with you and says, why can NYCHA m make needed repairs first before building? My apartment is unacceptable and repairs get pushed back days, weeks, months. I've uh, been waiting for cabinets for two years. We get these all the time. We should tell you NYCHA did release a statement to us, a fresh one for tonight, saying that NYCHA and our partners will continue to engage residents throughout the process of rebuilding Fulton and Elliott Chelsea to ensure that they are properly included in decision making and planning for their new homes. But Norman, you say that that process is flawed. It's not only flawed, but their language, the developers and nitrous are mirroring their own language. And my challenge to them, if you really want to include the residents and you want their opinions, do a vote, give them 30 days notice, and then see what happens. Uh, I think that that's the way to proceed here. Uh, and what they've did so far is not adequate. It, it doesn't meet the kind of standard if you want to include the resident's input. Have you ever seen anything like this? I know we've we've seen other cities um, do demolition and, and rebuild. And some would say that that probably would be um, necessary. Some of the buildings are so um, in such bad shape after decades of, you know, lack of repairs. What say you? It was a question too. Both of you, whoever wants to go first, jump well, in there. Ahead, um, listen, Dave, Nick, I feel they neglected us on purpose, whatever's happening now, but I, I think it's a possibility to save Fulton. 
and Chelsea, our buildings are not that bad. And, you know, to me, that's not a home. That's a feeling. I love everybody in my community. I know everybody. We look out for each other's kids. They're going to create diversion when that happens. People are going to want to not walk next to us because, you know, we're from the projects. You know, I already feel like we're already being targeted. But, you know, I, I love Fulton. And, and, you know, I'm going to do everything I possibly can, Monica. Yeah. And, and making sure your voices are heard is a big deal. Right, Norman? We're supposed to, the voices of the residents, that's the most important thing. Well, that's what, what's frustrating is that NYCHA and the developers say that's what they're intending, but their actions don't meet that rhetoric. And so if you really care about what the residents want, and maybe a majority of the residents do want demolition. I don't hear that. And all I'm saying, the challenge is if you want to match your rhetoric, have a real election, have an independent group, do it, make it transparent, give us the results. For example, why is Fulton, Elliott, Chelsea being combined? And what about the vote? How many people of Fulton voted for demolition? How many from Elliott, Chelsea voted? Maybe Elliott, Chelsea wants the demolition, but Fulton doesn't. Why is it binding in that kind of situation? So there is enough opportunity now they're going to have to go through the Euler process. Your colleague is absolutely right. The Euler process usually takes six months as a general rule. There's enough time now not to rush this thing and let's begin from step one and do it properly and get the residents and let them express their preference and then we see where we go. Jacqueline, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious. Is there anything that NYCHA can tell you to convince you that this is the best way to go? Absolutely not. I do not um, believe NYCHA. I do not believe the developer. You know, I, I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. You're going to take, I, I, first of all, I love my apartment. I don't need, I love washing dishes with my hand. I don't need a dishwasher and I don't need a dryer. That's all luxury stuff. I'd rather have what I have now and know that I'm going to be in that apartment and grab be grandfathered in it than to live in a luxury apartment and know that I'm going to be kicked out after two years that they're going to raise the rent to 40% or 50%. So I do not believe them. And, you know, I've heard, I've talked to so many of the residents there over the years and it's, it, it is really like that. It's, it's either they're real, they're, they, nothing. NYCHA can say nothing or do nothing that they don't trust um, the city. And then there's some that we did talk to of a certain age, mostly millennials, the younger um, residents were saying that they were open to it. So I don't know, is it because of the years of lack of promises for repairs? Did that damage the trust that you have for the city, Jacqueline? Absolutely. I mean, they all the you know, every time there's a situation, you know, uh, we'll take care of it or you don't have to worry about it. And um, they always let you down with any anything that you you ask NYCHA to help with. You know, you know it's interesting, Norman, you, you're a lawyer. So trust is I thought that was the key word when I was out there is trust. And if you don't have the trust of your residents, then how do you you know demonstrate that there's a plan that's the best for all? Well, I think you once again, Monica, hit it on the head. Uh, Jackie is talking about the years of mistrust and distrust that exist vis-a-vis -vis NYCHA. And so now all of a sudden, with the help of some developers, they think they're going to be able to hoodwink uh, the people, at least at Fulton. And as I said before, the people are like Jackie. They're smart. They're committed to their what they have right now. And, and less there's a clear plan to try to persuade them that what they're proposing is in their best interest. I think you're going to have the resistance throughout this process. But also when they go to the ULER process, I've been through that many a time. You go to the community board. You go then to the borough president. You then go to the city planning commission and then finally to the city council. And at that point, there's going to be lots of residents uh, objecting to demolition and this plan, and also potentially the people at Fulton, I know them, they'll organize a citywide effort because if it could happen in Fulton and Elliott Chelsea, 
It could happen at any other development in, in the future. But you hit it also on the head. Perhaps the beginning there because of the gentrification and the increase in real estate value in this particular neighborhood. And I find that very troubling because uh, if that's what they're doing, they should be upfront about it. And I'd like to thank Gisela for watching. Ella, sweetie, Pabone is watching. David, thank you for your comments. Uh, Natasha, we can't get to all of them. There's too many comments about this topic. So you know we're going to be on it. Continuing coverage here on PIX11. What's happening at Chelsea and Fulton? Uh, talking to the residents, getting all sides because there are so many sides. There are seniors. We've been in the seniors' homes who don't want to leave no matter what. Uh, there are the, there's some residents who say, I, I'm, I'm open. I'm open. I want to hear more. And this is exciting, but a little bit scary. And we've talked to some who say, let's do this. Let's see a new future in NYCHA um, and open to the demolition idea. So such a range of emotions. Thank you again, Jacqueline and Norman, for being on our show. They were on our show Gosh, it was, was it a few years ago? Uh, so what was old is new again. We keep coming back to it. Thanks for joining us live as always. And all the people watching on Facebook, including everyone who has been following, of course, our housing continual coverage here. But don't forget, we do a lot of community stories too. If you need our help, you know what to do. Reach out to us. Monica makes it happen right here on PIX11 every night at four, five, six, and 10. We're making it happen together.